The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat peer-to-peer. Hello, hello, hello. How's it going, Marty? How are you guys? Good. 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 Happy Saturday. Maybe slightly hungover. Ah. Uh, is this because of the rally, the, the crypto rally? Are you partying already, Bonnie? <laughs> yeah, we're already pre-celebrating over here. <laughs> <laughs> He's already in the bull, full-blown bull market. Using, using that XMR, putting it to good use. Nice. Nice. Did you? Were you able, were you able to use it? For your, for your no, I'm just hunt? kidding. I, I, no. I don't want to sell. <laughs> I might sell some of my other coins, but I'm going to hodl my XMR for probably a, a very long period of time at this point. Yeah, I don't blame you. But that being said, I do like to use it just because I feel like it, you know, it, help, it helps it grow. It helps it grow. It's, it's That's true. If, yeah. When I can find products that I can actually buy with XMR, I, I tend to do that. And that'll get easier as we get out of this bear market, you know, once the price starts going up to like two, three hundred dollars. Because down here at like a hundred, hundred fifty, I don't really want to. Even if I could, I don't really want to sell my XMR um, unless it's just for small stuff. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It's painful when I do it, but at the same time, I'm just like, I gotta, sp- I gotta spread it, you know. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, definitely. But I mean, you know, we we ha- we have our fiat, you know lives as well so it's not as painful right because i could just you know move more fiat into monero so it doesn't you know it doesn't if I, if you're all crypto and your whole life is crypto and like you you don't have a fiat job i could see it being even more difficult to bring yourself to you know to spend your 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 stored coins you know yes especially during bear markets yeah so what's going on, man? It's a big week. It's actually one reason I moved to Mexico years ago. Is that we were we were in this really you know terrible, brutal bear market in 2018, and I was like, man, I don't want to spend my crypto. I'm I'm starting to run out of fiat. Uh, I'm just gonna move to Mexico and <laughs> try and save some money. There, are, I think that's like a theme, right? A lot of people co- go through that exact same thought process. <laughs> They're like, all right, how do I hold? I don't want to lose any of my crypto. How do I hodl it through the bear market? Just gotta reduce other parts of my life i think that's like you know that that really ties into the crypto culture too right especially in bitcoin and monero it like Mm -hmm. creates this type of individual who's like a minimalist um right they're they're not looking to just like unnecessarily spend it's pretty interesting how that all affects the culture of crypto well at the top of the market in 2017 i was like all right got a nice apartment you know (laughs) bought a car (laughs) <laughs> and then i was like well let's, let's go in reverse now let's let's let, let's try and value minimalism and see how that goes <laughs> exactly but luckily mexico is such a beautiful country it's such a good place to live that i just decided to stay here awesome man yeah i'm trying to i'm trying to slowly convince the need of that but for us i mean it's it's the it's the leaving the family we just have so much family here you know it's hard for us to pick up and leave that's the hard part like yeah and it's not like it's a quick flight down to Mexico from where you're at. It's probably what, like four hour flight. Yeah. 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 Five, five. Yeah. Which isn't uh, that yeah. bad. It's not I mean, terrible, if you commit but... to being like, all right, I'll come back for every holiday or like try to motivate the fam to come down, down for certain holidays. I mean, you could theoretically end up seeing your family and friends more than you normally do anyway. Right. Cause it's like you <laughs> commit to doing it. Um, but it's tough. Cause like, yeah, we see our family a lot, right? Yeah, I'm very close. Yeah, we're we're, we're like, both close to our weekend. family, so it's like a little tough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like even during the week. <laughs> like, and I got my daughter. I'd like yeah. have to bring her down like part of the year, and it would yeah, be tough. It's a pickle. Yeah. It's a pickle. <laughs> How about you with fam situation? What, what what was your experience like? Uh, well, my family lives in Texas, so they're actually pretty it's close so by. Yeah, oh yeah, that's, that's not, not too bad. Yeah, yeah, totally different. Mm. It's like at some point too. here. I would like to buy an airplane and then I can just fly back easily because, you know, <laughs> going across the border and airplanes aren't really like, they're not that expensive. Um, yeah. It's not so I mean, you, you can get a really Cessna. nice one, of course, but yeah, you just get a little Cessna, uh, put a you GPS fly? in there. Yeah. Yeah. I actually at the last Monerotopia, I was down there in Florida cause I was getting my pilot's license. Oh, oh right. yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're, you're, you are now a pilot. Indeed. I haven't flown in about mm, six or seven months, but yeah. 
Sick, man. How That's is pretty it? pretty cool. Or is it like you get? It's really like, fun. You get nervous every time you get in there, or you're just like, is it like second nature? Mm, at first, you're a little bit nervous, especially on your first solo. Um, but you get used to it. It's you know, it's not a big deal. Dude, can we go on a trip together? That's can pretty we, cool. Uh, was like, can we arrange play. something? I'll pay. <laughs> hey, you should, you sure, should yeah. like like charge people for experiences. <laughs> Come fly the body. <laughs> that's a, a that's, that's commercial commercial flight. I'll have to get my commercial license, which is like a whole <laughs> other thing. Well, you know, you could have people come in, right? Obviously, you could have passengers come in, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I can't. I just can't charge for it. That's yeah. all. Well, I mean, unless you're secretly charging <laughs> the narrow. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can like split the cost. We can like split the gas. Right. And you got to pay for the gas. <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. I've got to get my currencies again. I, the last time I flew was back in uh, in June this year. So I've got to go, you know, brush up and just having that time. And so do you fly then in Mexico? Do you, is there a place you go where you can like rent and fly? They don't really have aero clubs down here. Um, there, I'm sure there's got to be like some people privately have their own airplane. Um, but I looked around a little bit and there just weren't any aero clubs uh, in the city I'm in. So maybe in Mexico City they have some. I, I haven't checked on there. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit harder because... Uh, I guess if I could find someone that had an airplane that would, you know, rent it out to me. So uh, I don't know. That's why I said it's, it's just easier to get my own airplane airplane at this point. If I was in the States, it would be a lot easier. I mean, there's aero clubs everywhere. There's plane rentals in, in many different places, but it's not really a thing too much here in Mexico. Right. Dude, you just progressively get more and more badass and impressive with this <laughs> conversation we have. You're like slowly revealing more. <laughs> Uh, body is an impressive individual. Um, Thanks, man. Yeah, man. Take, take, take it away on price. So, uh, I, you know, I really don't have too much for you guys on price today. Um, everything's going up. Everyone's pretty happy. Uh, I was posting yesterday that the vibes feel a lot like the 2015. Uh, actually, that's a different chart. Let me just pull that chart up. Things feel like we're back in 2015. And I actually overlaid. So this blue line right here is the bear market from 2014, 2015. And right around here, everyone is saying, oh, we're going to get a pullback. You know, I'm going to I'm going to buy once we pull back to the lows. And I kept saying we're we're probably not going to pull back to the lows. I, I just don't see it. That trade is too easy. Right. It's too easy to see this market and then and then scoop that up. I said, be prepared because we might actually just keep going up. And we might just not even respect any of these resistances. So the other thing that's happening right now is that Bitcoin dominance is really jumping. And so this is something that I've noticed they'll do when they want to try and convince people that a bull market is happening. They'll push the Bitcoin dominance up because people, you know, once you're confident that Bitcoin is doing good, then you might roll some funds in, into other coins. Uh, they did the same thing back in... Um, like right before this bull market kicked off in the fall of 2020, uh, which is kind of a, a painful memory for, uh, for Monero people. Um, but yeah, this is 2020 right here. And they just pushed the Bitcoin dominance from 60% all the way up to uh, like back to 73%, which was its local high. And this was kind of necessary. It's the lowest cost way that market makers can sort of convince everyone that the bull market is back on. So they shove the Bitcoin dominance up, they push Bitcoin into all time highs, and then the tidal wave into shit coins and altcoins. Um, that, that was the next movement. So right now it feels a little bit like that in, in a larger picture. It's, it's still a somewhat, you know, we're not looking at 2x, 5x gains here. We're looking at 30%, 40%. But still, there are these kind of vibes to me where it feels a lot like, um, a lot like this parabolic move that started in 2015. So at some point, we're going to pull back here, and that's that's really the, the big question. When are we going to pull back? Uh, so we'll talk more about other cryptos later. But for now, Monero looks really nice. Um, if you remember last week, I was saying we had broken this area right here, and I, I did feel like we were going to head to this next area very quickly. Um, so right now, we've hit a pretty natural resistance point. And, you know, the question is, are we going to go higher? With this kind of momentum, I really, I really do kind of expect that we'll come and trend back up here. Um, but we also know that Monero's price is often managed and it does look to me, uh, so the divergence is here. It does look to me like they probably did spend a decent amount of time accumulating Monero, right? All of these, all these places right here. Overall, um, if we go to longer timeframes, you can see that 
essentially they they spent the past few weeks accumulating either accumulating now or just trying to keep their doors open so when we go to longer time frames this is kind of a longer um average right so you can see that uh that we spent a lot more time overall with positive Monero divergences so they probably are accumulating at some point i had a i have a thesis now that i put on reddit a couple of days ago what we saw in August at the top of that August bubble, or not really bubble, but you know, at the top of the August bounce, Binance shut down Monero for like 10 days, their Monero withdrawals. And then they diverged their prices down by about 2%, 1% to 2%. And my theory was that they took whatever remaining Monero they had and sold it on Kraken to try and keep the price down even as they shut off withdrawals. And so they wanted to do that to suppress the price while they pushed everything up. Um, because the, the price on Monero, looked, the action looked weird. It's like we just had a flat top. And so my thesis is that whenever the top of this bounce comes, we will probably see, or maybe not probably, but if we see Binance shut down withdrawals again for you know at least a few days and we see negative price divergences, that's probably an indication that we're at a temporary top. Um, so that would be nice if they did that because you know that makes it a really easy trade, uh, makes it really easy to get out of my uh, my altcoin and shitcoin positions. Um, it looks like somebody on Bitfinex is getting bullish on Monero. We, the green line is the longs, the red line is the shorts. So they're closing their shorts, they're entering Monero longs. Uh, this is this is nice. Um, I'm not sure how much we can trust Bitfinex numbers or who the players are, but uh, it's interesting. Um, this development, so XMR BTC, if you remember last week, um, we actually drew this outer triangle, uh, this guy right here. Um, saying, well, it looks like we might need to, to redraw this triangle. You can see this line right here. Um, so we had this line drawn for quite a long time. It made sense. It's kind of where things were topping out, poked above, and then kind of hung out there. And of course, you know, the thesis was that eventually we were going to break above this, and which we did. Um, but it sort of required that we redraw the lines, which we did last week. Now, right now, we're kind of falling out of this of this triangle, and that's really not something we want to see. But it's also not surprising. Um, so what happens is with with price, one reason price just explodes like this, both for Monero and other coins, particularly for Bitcoin and other coins. These exchanges, they can see when funds are flowing onto their exchanges. Um, they've also got their chain analysis, so they've got really sophisticated tools to understand on-chain flows. Um, like you've got a lot of maximalists, for example, will look at Glassnode and they'll talk about on-chain metrics. I've never seen a single one of those guys ever predict a bear market or a pullback <laughs> on, on that data. But I do believe that the exchanges, the market makers, and the chain analysis guys probably can see that kind of stuff. So, and people got paid yesterday too. So you have to imagine that these exchanges can see flows into their exchange. And so when they have the idea there's going to be organic purchasing, they front run that. So before people have the opportunity to buy, they just start pushing the price up massively, knowing that people are wanting to buy and they're going to have to buy higher. They did this, for example, at the end of 2020 um, with Bitcoin and with just in general. Everybody kind of knew we were entering a bull market, but instead of just kind of like, like we did in 2016, where we went up, you know, and, and had a nice smooth curve on the way up. They just slammed the price up to 42,000 because they wanted to make sure people had to buy higher. Um, it's kind of a, a little trick that they pull. So um, I think they're basically what's happening here is this is real organic purchasing of cryptocurrency. But the price is kind of getting a little bit far ahead of itself. They're using that organic basis to lever up the market partially again. Um, so. With that, you kind of have to expect there, there can be very sharp pullbacks, and there probably will be. Um, in terms of XMR BTC, it looks like they pushed a bunch of extra money into cryptocurrency. And even though Monero has some pretty nice gains, um, you know, they're they're pushing a lot more leverage into the other currencies and the other cryptos. Um, so, yeah, this, this was a pretty natural place for a pullback, although <laughs> this happened in the middle of the night, which is just kind of annoying. I don't know, maybe that was like 4 a.m., um, 5 a.m. Eastern. So not really too much of an opportunity to take advantage of that unless you put your Monero on an exchange, which is uh, you know not recommended, of course. Um, we've got the, uh, <clears throat> let's see here, we've got the uh, Monero dominance. And this is, again, another chart where we just kind of blew through some, the, the first resistance. We spiked up here to this second resistance. Again, I'm not sure if that, if that wick was real or not. But 
in in the way that you expect charts to behave, you expect to visit this line at some point again. So for example, we we came up here, we didn't pull back, we just broke through. So now it's not uncommon. Like this isn't a, a terrible thing for us to come back down and, and visit this line and then try and come back up again. Um, that would be that would be sustainable market action, the kind of action that we want to see. Um, and then finally, these divergences, I don't know what happened here, but OKX, I guess they decided they want Monero. Uh, the white line is the sum of all of these. Um, sorry about that. Uh, the sum of all of these uh, different exchanges here. So, I mean, they really like they really pushed up their acquisition of Monero right now, which is kind of weird because we've seen this pullback despite them trying to acquire more Monero. So I'm not quite sure what to make of that. Um, but, you know, interesting, interesting dynamics there. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at all the regular macro stuff. We have the Dixie as, let's go to the daily. So if you remember uh, last week, I was saying that when this wick happened and then we ended the day down on what really looks like the beginning of a bullish movement, that was very for risk assets, that was a very positive sign because it meant that Dixie was probably going to have more losses, uh, which indeed is what we've seen this week. Uh, the dollar index has continued to decrease. Now, you have to keep in mind, this is more important as an indicator of how funds are flowing. It's not so much, it's not necessarily like the dollar is strong, right? It's just that the dollar is strong relative to other currencies because of how people are moving funds. So this just helps us to see that. We also have the uh, reverse repos, which haven't really done anything in the past week. They're just kind of flat and hanging out down here. So if we're going into a real bull market, I do want to see this trend down, um, right? I, we, we want to see this start moving towards the bottom of that range. And ultimately, we would love to see this thing break down out of this, um, out of this broadening structure. So that'll be another big sign that we're actually going on a sustained run and not just, um, you know, not just a temporary fake out pump. We've got crude oil, uh, and as we talked about, we kind of want it to stay in this lower boundary in this range here. Uh, hopefully, we don't end up, you know, jumping up too high. That would be an early indication that inflation could be problematic. Uh, gold is another big one that we talked about. We really want to see gold continue to perform. Now, my thinking on the gold chart here is that we've broken through some very important resistances. Uh, this line, for example, has been a very important line for pretty much the whole bear market. We broke to the upside of this rising wedge, which was something I was expecting that we would do. And now we're also breaking kind of uh, horizontal areas of significance. At this point, with this kind of momentum, I would expect gold to continue heading up here to, to this range. And that will probably be a significant point where we will probably see gold pull back and we'll see a shift into the stock market. Uh, so stock markets are doing really good. Uh, I was kind of hoping that we might end the week actually above this resistance line. It would have been cool if we could have just uh, closed up into this area. That would be significant strength. But there's no reason why that has to happen, had to happen yesterday. It, it could be on Monday. It could be next week. Uh, that pullback that I was kind of hoping for midweek never came. And so once mid-Wednesday came around, it, I was kind of saying, well, we're probably just not going to get a pullback, which is good because that meant that we were going to have strength. Uh, and then we've got the NASDAQ as well. And it's not doing quite as well, but we should expect that we, sh we should get into this area next week on the NASDAQ. And again, because everything's correlated, we, we want to see the stock market do well. It's not necessarily a competition. In fact, it's not a competition at all. People that have money in the stock market, most of those institutional players, they're not just going to take that money and, and drop it into crypto. Uh, some of them do a little bit, but in general, the more important aspect is is risk on. Are people buying risk assets, tech stocks, cryptocurrency? Uh, and then we've got, we can take a look at all of the assets relative to each other. If you remember last week, we said that silver was kind of, you know, silver had surprisingly not done as well, and that would probably catch up. And that's what happened this week. Silver, silver came back up. Yeah, so... Um, Really nothing too crazy to speak of here. Bonds are kind of coming down a little bit. We're seeing a uh, bond market come down, which is fine. That's not a big deal. Um, crypto, you know, really took this big bounce on well, yesterday. Uh, so not really too much there to look at. Nothing too, too interesting. Uh, oh, that's right. The inflation numbers. Inflation came down. Uh, it hit targets. Everything was basically exactly at target. Which is nice. We, we kind of would have preferred to see it beat targets. We'd like to see inflation coming down a little bit faster. That gives us more confidence. But 
for the meantime, this is good. Like, this is what we wanted to see. We need to continue seeing another, let's just say in one more month. If we have good inflation numbers next month, that should really be a catalyst to continue these gains, to sustain these gains. Um, the Federal Reserve is looking at core inflation, the blue line, more than they're looking at CPI. Um, but this is also good just from like a social uh, social sense. We, we don't want people having to pay ridiculous amounts for basic goods and services and food and housing and whatnot. Uh, so that's good. The global price of metals, this is just an index. Again, we're, we're bouncing off of this area right here. This is only a monthly chart, so we only get data little by little. But this, this is a very natural place, the standard deviation. This is a natural place for, for things to start going up. So again, just um, the idea that, that gold and silver should continue to perform here. And we can revisit this chart as well that I showed you guys last week. This was the chart where I said that you can see clearly over the last two decades that gold has made reversal before the stock market has made reversal. So that's what we're wanting to see here. We're wanting to see gold continue to make gains, which, uh, which was the same as this chart over here. So again, we're looking for gold to continue. And at some point it will be, especially if we kind of get a confirmation that the bull market, well, sorry, let me rephrase that the bear market is temporarily on hold and we're on some kind of at least miniature bull market run, some kind of sustained run. We want to see chart structure and crypto confirm that to a greater degree. Um, and if and when we do see that, that will be the time to hop out of gold and hop back into crypto, um, just depending on how you personally like to allocate your assets. Gold is the place I like to go. I like to sell crypto for gold at the top of these markets. Um, it, it always seems like gold might have the potential to really explode one day to, to go to the upside. Um, and it's nice just, just to hold a, a solid asset instead of dirty fiat dollars. So this is total crypto market cap. And you can basically see we have broken the larger bear market resistance. Uh, so we've kind of got our channel here. We've got our very top line and we just smashed right through that uh, in a nice little parabolic fashion. Um, we want to see this continue up. I would personally like to see this make it to kind of this horizontal area of significance. Um, whether or not we get there, I don't know, but the current momentum would suggest we, we would get there. We can also go to Bitcoin and see uh, Bitcoin's been performing really well. So Bitcoin looks very similar. Uh, I know that some of these lines look a bit schizophrenic, but it's just, you have, you just have to be able to do that to understand that you, you don't want to draw like one line and then think, Oh, we broke that line or, Oh, we didn't break that line when it's really, it's a process in a lot of cases. Like, so for example, this, this whole area right here is kind of a process of breaking through multiple resistances and you, you want to be able to see those. Um, but I do, I do turn off a lot of these lines. So the one that was significant to me was this guy right here. Uh, it was significant because that's the most recent, um, resistance line and it's also the most shallow resistance line so we smashed even right through that things peaked uh we got that wick last night things peaked kind of right at that same you know at that same area i do expect that this particular run will probably take us all the way to 25k uh as long as this momentum continues uh so that'll be nice like if if crypto is doing good if bitcoin is doing good monero is also going to do good and then, um, you, then you think it goes back and like retests like 20k or something yeah, I think that's that's likely. We'll probably do some kind of crazy thing, and then we'll do this. But on the way back down, what they'll do is they'll try and establish this as a support area. Because obviously, with all this action, that's significant resistance. So we just blew right through that. It's very likely we're going to have to come back down and test this area at some point. Um, but that's fine. We can do that in a few weeks from now. Uh, we already looked at the market cap dominance. Looked at oh I was doing something uh, the past few days that I thought was interesting so if y'all remember that I did a, uh, a regression analysis and I'm actually very close to posting that on Twitter like my full process for how that was derived um, but I also did this recently for Bitcoin divided by gold right so just BTC divided by XAU USD um, and this is actually a very nice chart this is a very smooth chart. Um, I've tried to do this for other assets, like, for example, the combined total crypto market cap chart. And you look at it and it's kind of dirty. There's not like great lines to draw. But for this chart, for Bitcoin versus gold, this is actually a very nice chart. And it's a shame that I didn't do this earlier because the very absolute low capitulation, low regression analysis shows that we we actually punched down through that. 
this would have been kind of a good corroborating signal if I had um, if I had done it sooner, uh, like just say a couple months ago, I could have said, OK, Bitcoin versus U.S. dollar didn't quite touch the ultimate low, but Bitcoin versus gold did. Uh, and that would have been kind of a signal, uh, another nice little signal to be getting long down here. Um, so, you know, hindsight 2020 and all that. Uh, but I thought that was interesting um, that uh, that Bitcoin versus gold has a nice uh, regression analysis that makes sense. So um, I'll probably try and do this for other assets. I tried to do it for Bitcoin versus the NASDAQ, and that also was a bit of a dirty chart. So, um, but uh, yeah, things things look nice. Monero is at, everything looks like it's close to a reasonable pullback area, but with this kind of momentum and strength, you just, <laughs> the price is not acting reasonably. So we might, we might go much higher than people think is possible on this first run, uh, hopefully out of the bear market. Um, we're gonna have to contend with, 20k probably again some sometime later this year even if we make a run to 28 30 or even 40k we are probably going to have to come back down to these areas at some point um, unless the macro situation changes but the fed is still selling assets um, they're still going to raise interest rates and then they're going to hold them there for a long period of time so we'll just have to play that by ear um, the macro will kind of tell us what's happening in real time um, kind of as a side a side note I was talking with a friend the other day and he was asking me how I set stop losses um, when I'm doing like spot trading. And I told him that I actually don't, I don't use stop losses. And that's, there's a danger to that. Um, for example, if you're not paying attention to the market, that can be dangerous. But the thing is the market is dynamic and the way that price moves is dynamic. So your stop losses kind of also need to be dynamic. And so it's, the other thing is you have to really have good control of your emotions. Um, you can't let your your hype emotions get in the way of taking profit and you can't let your fear emotions get in the way if hypothetically you need to move your stop loss down um, on a spot trade. Leverage is a whole different story. I don't recommend anyone trade leverage. You can even know what direction the market is going to go <laughs> and still not trade leverage successfully. This, this um, is why you're a good a natural pilot, man. You, you know how to navigate, <laughs> deal with risk, assess risk on the, on the dime. Wow, no stop loss. They teach you that. That's pretty they do teach you that. I, I I don't I don't trade, but um, the stop loss just seems like a very simple thing to do that really makes like trading easier, right? I guess if you're if you're constantly on it, like what you're doing, but you know if you're somebody that just kind of like, oh, did we get this? No, no. 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 You if you're somebody that just kind of wants to like, you know buy the lows and sell the highs and you don't want to lose your stack along the way. Right. I feel like stop yeah. losses are good things. What do you think? I would never have a stop loss for Monero. I'm going down with the ship. Nah, <laughs> I'm the same. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I'm the, I don't even, yeah, like there is no, there's no stop too. loss. <laughs> uh, uh, no, but like if you're just trading, um, I mean, stop losses are a good thing. If you're not on it all the time, if you're not confident in your ability to assess the market, then yeah, you really probably do want to use stop losses. So um, it's kind of a variable thing there. Their their safety and like that advice that I'm giving there, where I'm saying like I don't use stop losses, you just have to be very careful with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. At yeah, your own yeah, risk, yeah. people. At your own risk. <laughs> to trade at your own risk. Don't recommend it. <laughs> the thing that I do recommend though is that you move your stack periodically. You rebalance maybe once or twice a year. Um, if you can see the big broad trends that are happening, get on the right side of those trends and then just stay there. Like, for example, it was very clear, well, at least to me, it was clear in, um, in October of 2021 that that was a top. We were very close to a top. So pulling some off the table, reallocating, rebalancing your portfolio into gold, for example, that was a very natural move, right? That was easy to do. And then, and then you just stay there, right? You just hang out there for say nine, 12, 15 months. And then when you see the conditions starting to change, like we have over the past couple months, uh, you start reallocating, right? You you just, you, you don't trade. It's more like you have to manage your investment somehow. So that's, I really, above DCA, I recommend doing that. I mean, obviously, if you've got a fiat job and you're making money, then obviously DCA as well. Um, but if you're living off your crypto, you, you don't want to trade daily. You want to avoid that. It's a trap. But but you do want to rebalance your, your portfolio a couple times a year. I, I play the you know, just try to acquire more in the bear markets and keep my crypto as my crypto. Just because I'm, yeah. I'm not on top of it enough. I wouldn't, 
and I think we talked about this last time. I just wouldn't want the added stress. <laughs> but yeah, if you're if you're <clears throat> if you're completely all crypto and you're not in the fiat world, you know, you're not making any fiat income. Yeah, it's kind of silly not to follow the big moves, right? Seasonally. Yeah, I mean, you kind of unless you just bought really early and you've got a few hundred Bitcoin or a few million in the bank, or sorry, not in the bank. If you have a few million in crypto and you're just chilling, then okay, maybe you don't need to trade, but. Yeah, if you if your job is to trade the markets, you kind of you kind of have to take advantage of these movements. Yep. Degen, that's a degen job. Don't do it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All right, man. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks so much. I mean, so so overall, though, you think you think Monero will follow? You know, will it continue to keep up with Bitcoin? Like I kind of asked this last time, but now we're seeing it, right? It seems like boom, Bitcoin's taking off leaving everybody in the dust? Uh, do you just feel like it will just continue to creep up and follow and catch up and essentially maintain this, the same ratio against Bitcoin or slowly? slowly? With volatility. With yeah. volatility. In fits and starts and with volatility, yes. Mm -hmm. um, like So they're, they're pushing a bunch of money, leverage, stable coins, whatever, into Bitcoin at the moment. Um, and so we're having a pullback, but at some point crypto is going to pull back and it's, it's likely that Monero will catch up during those moments. They can't continue to press deeper and deeper fractional reserve ratios. Um, they're just basically out of Monero. So it, it'll be in like counter cyclical timing, right? They'll pump Bitcoin, they'll pump the crypto markets, and then they'll roll. Some people will roll some of that into Monero. So we're, we'll probably see kind of like It'll happen in fits and starts and it'll happen with volatility. But I do believe that overall we should keep up with the crypto market uh, this time. I mean, obviously not like the brand new coins that do like a hundred X or a thousand X, right? Those, those coins are a different story, but Bitcoin, Ethereum. Yeah, we, we should keep up. The other thing too, is you can see, you know, this is a really natural resistance area, right? If you remember last week, I, I said that if we see Bitcoin, um, and the crypto market's pumping. I was saying last week that we could we could roll over, right? We could spend some time going sideways here against the rest of the crypto market. So it's not entirely unexpected for this to happen. Luckily, we're we're still in this rising triangle, or sorry, this rising wedge. Hopefully, we can stay there. Normally, these things do break to the downside. Uh, we do have this kind of secondary resistance right here. This, uh, sorry, secondary support. This this rising resistance that turned into support after we got above it. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm sorry. I probably don't have like as great a news as I would like to have. I do think this chart is still bullish. It's just that we might need some consolidation time before continuing to go up. All right. So, so no point oh two by uh, Monerotopia. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I can't promise that. Huh? I'll do my best. <laughs> All right, we'll see what you can do. Uh, thank you so much, <laughs> man. Right, Greatly so appreciate much, it. Great convo as always. Hey, my pleasure. Great thorough. Uh, for those that are listening in the space, obviously I, you, you get more out of it if you're watching the charts. You can see those on YouTube. But um, we will move on. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, guys. Have a great Talk to you next weekend. Bye.